An article published by USA Today on February 13, 2024 is titled Greenland is Turning Green Again for the First Time Since Medieval Times. Why it Matters. Here's the lead. Quote, we may need to rethink that old expression, Greenland is ice, Iceland is green. End quote. The very important information follows in the next paragraph. Quote, New research published Tuesday says that because of global warming, Greenland's ice sheet is melting fast and being replaced by vegetation, end quote. In fact, according to a co-author of the peer-reviewed paper, quote, parts of Greenland are becoming green again for the first time since the Vikings visited nearly 1,000 years ago, end quote. The article in USA Today includes this information, quote, an estimated 11,000 square miles of Greenland's ice sheet and glaciers have melted over the past three decades. Overall, the total area of ice loss in the last 30 years is slightly greater than the size of Massachusetts and represents about 1.6% of Greenland's total ice and glacier cover. End quote. The article in USA Today asks the question, quote, Why should we care about what happens in Greenland? End quote. The article responds with a vague statement about local effects on people, flora, and fauna. It then quotes the lead author of the peer-reviewed paper, quote, The loss of ice mass in Greenland is a substantial contributor to global sea level rise, a trend that poses significant challenges both now and in the future, end quote. It gets worse, of course. Greenland will continue to get greener as the ice and snow melt in response to an increasingly warm planet. The study co-author I quoted as this video began told USA Today that, quote, ice is projected to diminish further and at a faster rate than, decent, than recent decades, and in time that will promote greening via vegetation expansion, which this study shows is already well underway, end quote. That's very inconvenient for those of us interested in retaining habitat for humans on Earth. Let's turn to the peer-reviewed paper in Scientific Reports, part of the esteemed Nature series of publications. Titled, Land Cover Changes Across Greenland, Dominated by a Doubling of Vegetation in Three Decades, the peer-reviewed open access paper was written by four scholars. Published on February 13, 2024, the abstract includes this information, quote, Besides the vastly decreased ice cover, we find a doubling in total aerial coverage of vegetation, a quadrupling in wetlands coverage, increased meltwater, decreased bare bedrock, and increased coverage of fine unconsolidated sediment. We explain that, that these land cover changes represent local rapid and intense geomorphological activity that has profound consequences for land surface albedo greenhouse gas emissions, landscape stability, and sediment delivery, and biogeochemical bio processes, end quote. Well into the introduction section comes this information, which falls deep into the category of duh. Quote, higher air temperatures are producing more suitable conditions for vegetation and expansion and growth. Well into the introduction section comes this information, which falls deep into the category of duh. Quote, higher air temperatures are producing more suitable conditions for vegetation expansion and growth. Vegetation cover is perhaps the most profound land cover change we have quantified because it has a considerable feedback effect on the climate system. For example, the newly established and enlarging wetlands and fens in Phase 6 regions of the northeast of Greenland are associated with considerable methogenesis. Just in case you missed this bit of information the first time, here's the synopsis. Quote, warming temperatures are melting ice and snow. As a result, plants are filling in the area previously occupied by ice and snow. As one of several negative results, methane is being released. Methane is a powerful greenhouse gas. The following paragraph finishes on a stunningly naive note. I'll include almost the entire paragraph for context. Quote, we identify substantial vegetation aerial expansion and growth in regions of critical permafrost thaw, 
That expansion can be interpreted as a manifestation of increased air temperature warming ground surfaces and driving permafrost thaw. Permafrost thaw impacts a suite of human and economic activity. Greenland's infrastructure has been forced onto challenging ground underlain by thick, poorly consolidated glaciogenic sediment and permafrost with economic development, localized population growth, and increased tourism that all have environmental consequences. Our analysis can therefore be interpreted to reveal a positive feedback between permafrost degradation and vegetation encroachment that will likely increase exponentially, threatening both local communities and infrastructure. These land cover feedbacks therefore warrant policymakers' attention. End quote. Of course, quote, these land cover feedbacks warrant po- policymakers' attention. End quote. As with much, and perhaps most, scientific evidence generated during the past few hundred years, this information warrants the attention of policymakers. Does that mean this in- information will attract the attention of policymakers? More importantly, can we expect policymakers to act? I would be very surprised. As a starting point, how would policymakers act? They undoubtedly know about the aerosol masking effect. After all, the aerosol masking effect has been frequently and flagrantly on display during the last few years. Regional impacts were often reported during the COVID-19 pandemic and, more recently, in response to the use of cleaner fuels by large ships in the Atlantic Ocean. Policymakers will continue to demand the conservation of fossil fuels from the masses. Meanwhile, they will continue to expect monetary support from a few wealthy donors who have assumed the task of maintaining aerosol masking. The delicate balance between conserving fossil fuels and maintaining aerosol masking allows the continued survival of all life on Earth. You would be wise to keep this in mind the next time you forego a trip to see a loved one because you are concerned about burning fossil fuels. As much as I appreciate your conscious-driven concern, I also appreciate the time spent with loved ones. 